send me an email. Hi, I don't know how much of it you've already heard. <laughs> I'll start over. Hi, my name is Jean and I am the education and volunteer coordinator at Community Homeworks here in Kalamazoo. So glad you've been able to join us tonight for our class on hand tools. Three of our instructors will be sharing their favorites. Hopefully there'll be some new ones for you to learn about, or maybe a new way to use something you already own. I'd also like to remind you that Community Homeworks provides critical home repairs to income qualified families here in Kalamazoo. If you think you have a repair that we might be able to help you with, please contact our office or send me an email at education at communityhomeworks.org. We would be glad to get an application to you and hopefully be able to provide some services to you. Joining us tonight are three of our favorite instructors. Jason, can you invite them to join us? There's Sam and Harry and Gary. They have all taught classes for us for several years now. I hope some of you have had the opportunity to meet them in person and learn something from their vast array of knowledge. We're going to start with Sam tonight. This is Sam Eubanks. And Sam, would you share a little bit about yourself and then share your favorite tool with us? Hi, Jean. Hi, everybody. Um, glad you're doing well. Wish we were doing this in person, of course. Um, I'm a remodeling contractor who've been in the business for 30 plus years now, um, have lived in the Kalamazoo area since, um, 1999 and, um, got involved with community homeworks a few years ago doing weatherization classes and a fun class that I really like is building the interior storm windows, which I hope, uh, we can do again. And, um, so I'm I'm real honored to be here tonight. I I appreciate you guys inviting me along. So hopefully some of the tools I have here you'll find interesting, um, if not useful. And um, I guess the first one I'll start with is one that saved my uh, uh, me from losing a number of uh, fingernails over the years. At least I hope so. And I don't know if I can get it on the screen. Well, it's um, called a slide shooter. And basically, it's a uh, a rod with a um, handle on it that goes into another um, piece of tubing that's hard. They're both hardened. And uh, what you can do with this is you uh, stick a nail in the end of it and then wait for it just to come out a little bit. And then you can use that to nail remotely or far away into an area where you can't get your fingers in with a hammer by itself. Um, when I first started out in the trades, I used to do a lot of joist um, hanger nailing and lost my first thumbnail that way, um, smacking the thumb directly instead of the nail head. So this way is a lot safer. and. Um, um, so, and saves saves a lot of time when you're using it, so. It is so cool. I have never seen one of those. And my grandpa had tools that I had never seen either, but that's so cool. Please bring it to class sometime. I'd love to see it in person. And Will do. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I go, I used to, it, it's these, this one's called a slide shooter, but um, I grew, I, I got to know it by the name of a pea shooter, so. <laughs> I was say, and can you do things other than nails? We'll talk about that. Before. You can. <laughs> so Harry, can you pop that one? <laughs> well, first I want to say that that is the coolest tool I've ever seen. I mean, yeah. I got to the point when I was doing jo joist hangers where I had to go out and buy a uh, positive placement nailer. And that right. was a whole lot cheaper than this one, so I mean. <laughs> this is, the, the positive place was a whole lot more expensive so that was great okay well my name is harry harry jackham i have only been here in the kalamazoo area about four years now 
uh, came from the east side of the state. And while I was there, I taught residential construction at the high school level, residential construction techniques at a college level. Um, and that was after years of teaching middle school, which is probably why I have a lot of gray hairs here. Um, I also spent a lot of time with Habitat for Humanity on the east side. I was the construction manager and the general contractor there. So it was a great time, but we really enjoy the west, the west side of the state. Uh, what have I been with Community Homeworks? About what, two, three years? Maybe four years? And, and yeah, so it's, we, I've enjoyed the time, and I really, I really hope we can get together one on one personal because this is fun, but it's not the same. So I'm going to just start off with a tool that I, one of the tools I like, and probably people have seen this. This, this is affectionately called a cat paw, which looks like a cat's foot. And this is the kind of thing that you use to pull nails that are driven home. And since I worked as, with high school students, and since I worked with, yeah, there's your cat right there. Right. I, I like the cat paw better than the cat, but that's okay. Oh, um, nice boy. Anyway, this is when I worked with high school students and, and habitat people, we had to pull a lot of nails. And just simply, this is one of those things. Jason, if this gets a little loud, you can go ahead and knock off the, uh, but you just hammer this into a nail. Can you, uh, and I used a small nail here just because it's a lot less work to get it off. But one of the things I wanted to show was this. Can you put the sound back on now? It's or is on. It, on? it is on. Okay. This is something I picked up many years ago. It's a nail puller. And you can see the little claws that are on it. I'm hoping that that shows. Yes, it does. Okay. <laughs> and this works very similar to where the little claws, and I'm hoping, can we see? Yeah, we do see that. Okay. You put that over the nail head, and you can either use a hammer to drive this in, or it's a self-driver. And then it takes and grabs a nail and pulls it out. This is one of the neatest little tools. It's kind of, well, obviously, if you're carrying with a tool belt, you'd much rather have this than this. But a friend of mine had one. He showed it to me, and I happened to see this at a flea market sometime, and I said, I got to have that. Man, you're going to just entertain me no end tonight. I'm so fascinated by all these things. Oh, this one here is probably a good 70 to 100 years old. Uh, I'm going to have to I, I, this when I go to the flea markets and see what I can find. <laughs> what did you have to say, Sam? I was going to say, I do a lot of remodeling, and I've got my trio of cat's pods here next to me. And... Um, they're an invaluable tool, that's for sure. Even, you know, um, if you want to deconstruct something, having a cat's paw like that is a great, great thing to have. Great. Okay, Gary. You, you, I'm sorry I put you third, man. You're going to have to work hard to top those two. Uh, 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 boy, am I, and I'm going to start out dull, but uh, my, my career went from, Truck mechanic, electrician, HVAC, steam, building inspection, a social degree, of course, and I and I teach your uh, water heater class. So, uh, so yeah, I start out as a truck mechanic, but one of my favorite tools is the humble crescent wrench, and uh, you know I have a whole box full of real wrenches, but just. Ah, uh, there we go. Just to get right on and open things up, and away we go. Uh, it's hard to beat having a crescent wrench in your pocket, ready to do things. What you do have to do to make the best use of this, you see the the thumb action here. Always. Always be wiggling that tighter. Otherwise, yeah, you round it off and it makes it look like it's a bad tool. But if you keep your thumb on there and you keep 
working and keeping that tight, it really does accomplish something. And then they do work this direction too. You can uh, do, you know, absolutely whatever's necessary. And I'm going to jump ahead just a tiny bit here. And a way to gain leverage is to get on your screwdriver bit with your crescent wrench. So next. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, I learned something new about the crescent wrench too. I'm so glad I get to come to all the classes that we offer. <laughs> I, it's really scary. Some of my friends think I'm as smart as you guys now just because I go to classes and I keep telling them no, but I can ask an expert. So, Sam, you're my next expert. What are you going to show uh, us? Well, I've got a question for Gary. Gary, can you show us that that what you were doing right at the end there? Were you putting the crescent wrench onto, um, okay, onto your screwdriver so you could get, like, be able to turn the screwdriver on it? Or a difficult screw or something? Yeah. So uh, a six-way screwdriver, uh, I guess I should make my next tool. And <laughs> you can up here. And um, uh, which, which, you know, there are times you're taking the screwdriver, you're putting all your weight and your muscle directly into it and trying to get the torque. So sometimes... Sometimes it's worth putting that extra lever on there. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that just finding all that leverage is, is like key to a lot of these tools. So well, especially hand tools. And so kind of keeping on Harry's theme of nail pulling, I don't have as cool a nail puller as, as uh, Harry has, but I've got this one, which I just picked up about a year ago. I keep forgetting left, right. And it works similar. You've, you've got the jaws, these go around the uh, head of a nail, or um, in my line of work, I'm pulling a lot of uh, casings and trim trim boards in that where they don't, they, there's no nail head. So you use this to pull the nails out through the back of the board. So I don't have a slick demonstration, but uh, this tool, and uh, this is what I used to use is this pair of, of of nipping pliers for rocking out a, uh, uh, pulling a nail. But these two, um, this one more so since it has this, this nice angled and longer handles here or nice arch gives you a lot of pull for pulling out a nail through a board or pulling out a, if you can get it onto the head of a nail, pulling it out of that way, so. I think a lot of people don't realize that when you've got trim that you're pulling out and the nails um, go through, it's better to pull them out through the back than trying to tear up the molding of the trim to uh, get it from the front. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, because if you if you push them back through, you're going to pop the, the face of the, the board and you are splintered there. So. Well, you guys are giving me an idea for a class this summer. I think we should go to a flea market and look. For <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. And you guys I, I hope to see flea markets open this the summer. I miss them a lot. <laughs> oh, but that, that one could be a really fun class about how you can find things at, at a, a flea market or a thrift store of tools. Harry, what do you have to share for us? Okay, well. A lot of people didn't have to see this, and there was a video I was showing to my college class, and they were wondering what it is. And it's called a Yankee screwdriver. And the way this thing works is when the, you put the head on the screw and you push it, it twists. And you can see that there's some kind of a unique gearing in it because it also you can change it. And I got to remember how to do that with this one. <laughs> to go the other way and take the screws out. <laughs> and this was something my grandfather had. And my grandfather was quite a carpenter. He was uh, one of the chief wood uh, cabinet makers for Ford Motor Company. And it's one of the neatest tools, but obviously 
when you're trying to use this, you're still using a lot of muscle power. And as things have changed, we've gone now to these, the drill <laughs> drivers. And honestly, in, in today's money or the money at this time, this thing probably cost as much as a reasonably cost drill driver. But it's so much longer. Can't you reach into places that you couldn't reach with the with the drill driver? I'm sure you could. Okay, and it comes in handy. Obviously, there's no power. Your know, battery goes about. You got something like this. Uh, this one shows a, a flathead screwed, which of course at that time that was about the only thing they had. There weren't anything with the cross points or the star points. Um, I find when I use this thing, it slips a lot and marks the surface because of the flat top. And I don't have a bit that would fit this particular unit with a cross point or a star drift bit. Besides that, this is so much easier. <laughs> but not nearly as cool to look at. <laughs> it isn't as cool, but I also have some long extensions for this too, so I can sneak into some pretty tight areas. Sam had something really long last time you did class for us, didn't you? Didn't you have some long that you were reaching in with? Right. Yeah. So, so longer bits for the for the my impact driver. Yep. Yep. Oh man, Gary, it's getting harder and harder to you know come up with something <laughs> cool. What do you have? Well, I'll go. I'll go back to the screwdriver. The very simple. Six-way screwdriver, um, amazingly inexpensive today, but um, it's six-way because we have two this way, two this way, and we have two different size of nut driver going on here too. So that's uh, these are things I toss in my back pocket and I head off and try to try to make something happen and go. And then recently, while I was showing different ways to get leverage, we can also leverage out here. There are ways to get a little bit out that way. Uh, and then recently I figured out that I can take this out of one and put it on and give myself considerable extension there. And there are times that that's just what it takes to get where you're going. And, um, you know, it, one of the... One of the sec not secrets we all know is it's getting that last fastener, that last fastener that's hung up the whole project. So we all, we all have ways of doing that. Okay. I, th I think that screwdriver is one of the first things you should have in your toolbox or your kitchen drawer or your junk drawer or the glove compartment of your car, whatever. It, it can be used for so many things. I I got mine out today at the gas station because the door for my gas cap wouldn't open. It was frozen. Mm -hmm. It was full of ice. So wait, and I got it out and I used, and I know that's not what you're supposed to do with it, but I used it and chopped all the ice out of the door of my, um, over my <laughs> gas cap and then I could fill my car. <laughs> and, so, and next spring, next spring, when you notice that the, the paint's all chipped, duct tape, duct tape. <laughs> We'll go to duct tape next. <laughs> you know, okay. So many things you can do with duct tape that don't have anything to do with home repairs, too. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Sam, what are you going to top all this with? All right. I don't know if I can. Um, <laughs> I bet you can. Are, are, there, are there any questions from the audience or anything? Not yet, but please. Okay. Well, Harry, question. what's that? I say, if you're watching and you have a question, please type it in. Um, Harry, Harry went with the nail pullers. I've typically used three for different jobs, so I'm just going to set those aside. 
and pass on that. Um, um, one other or one other thing that I do sometimes is a little carving. Um, so these are kind of the last of my hand tools. And I have what's called a spoke shave or a um, draw knife, excuse me, and a carving ax. And um, these are handy for um, on occasion when you need to do round pole framing or roughing out a piece. Um, these are, uh, you know, uh, easy hand tools that work very effectively as long as you keep them in good shape. Um, and uh, this, this is typically used for either debarking a tree or creating a um, uh, working a, a log down a round pole uh, so that it uh, gets the shape that you want. Um, and you can you can use it for um, roughing out um, if you're carving utensils. Um, and same with the the hatchet. This hatchet is good for. Um, uh, roughing out spoons, shapes, or knives if you're carving that. Um, and, you know, it's very handy and lightweight, and you can use it for splitting kindling, all sorts of things. I'm so glad you guys are my friends with all those spirits. <laughs> well, I got to say, I'm loving these older tools. I mean, that spoke shave, that, that's what that's got to go back hundreds of years. I mean, it's a great right. tool to have. So, Flea markets are great. I found this one. I don't know if you can see the hole in the handle. It was used as a display at a at a business or a restaurant. Someone had screwed through it and just like stuck it on the wall, you know, as a, a thing. And um, they were, you know, somebody was getting rid of everything. So I definitely picked that up. The hatchet, though, is new. So there's still people making hatchets. So um, I couldn't find one that I wanted. I looked for a year or so at uh, different flea markets and, and antique dealers. So had to break down and buy one. Well, but it's so much fun. It gives you, it gives you a real good reason to have to go to a flea market, doesn't it? <laughs> in, ca in case you need an excuse for your other half. Right. <laughs> right. right. Harry, have you found good things at a flea market, or do you have something newer to show us? Uh, well, a kind of a combination of two. And although I didn't find this at a flea market, I did find it on a rehab job that I was on one time. And it's a folding yardstick. Hmm. Okay, so it comes in three little sections. It's one of the neatest things to use. It fits in a tool belt or a pocket. And you still got the yardstick. That kind of was goes back to where in the early days of construction. And so I'm going to bring up a little newer tool, but this one's got a has got a granddaddy. This is a folding rule. And this is one of my favorite tools because if you're measuring for uh, finish work, particularly if you got to measure inside, it's also got an extension so you can get a good inside accurate measurement. These things have been around, well, I, I would have to say well over a hundred years. Again, as I said, my grandfather was a, a cabinet maker, carpenter for the Ford Motor Company, but he also built his own home. And at that time he used this for his measuring to build the home. And I mean, he has he's done beautiful cabinetry if you've ever had a chance to uh, be at uh, the Henry Ford Museum, that beautiful teak wood floor that's in there, he was on the crew that did that. And that, of course, after a while led to something like this, which we all know about the tape measure. Because the tape measure can go out 12, 16, even as much as 30 feet. It fits in a tool belt much easier. It's a little more accurate but I still use one of these more often probably than I use this. Ooh. It's so much fun to see how tools have progressed. I would, that would be a really great class too. Of It started this way and it's grown to, you know, like the drill driver. <laughs> you know? Gary. I'll keep, 
keep in mind that the the, uh, the simple carpenter square, that same device was used in building the pyramids. Well, not my device, but a simple square was used to build those something like that. Because as I've told many people, no matter how construction changes, square is square, plumb is plumb, and level is level. And that doesn't change no matter what you're doing. Well, and, and water uh, rolls and water rolls downhill. <laughs> Plumbers know that. Right. <laughs> well, and what I find really interesting. Hot on the left, right on the cold. Or, or cold on the right. And well, Friday's payday. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm finding it really interesting with the three of you who do construction and carpentry and things that I don't do, but I sew and I have so many tools that do the same types of functions as you do. You know, I have my seam ripper, which takes things out, my cloth tape measure, which measures things. You know, um, I use a T-square. I use a cutting board that has a grid on it. Um, it's it's just, I'm fascinated that things are so tied together for two different types of construction. Because I guess I'm doing construction also, just with fabric instead of with wood. So, Gary, mm -hmm. I know you have something else to share. Well, I... Use you to I'm, go get the other one ready. <laughs> okay, well, I I must say I did not bring my classiest tools, but my go-to to get something done tools. So, so these these really aren't, and they're kind of grimy, <laughs> but uh, wire strippers, just nice old-fashioned wire strippers. This isn't even my newest pair, but you know, down here we open, close, and strip wire, cut wire crimp terminals up in the top. And then what's really useful in any in any line, even the even the carpentry, is to be able to cut off a long screw to exactly the length you want and and have the threads not boogered up. And that's what this does. You can cut it off to exactly what you need and away you go. So that's the wire stripper, and I will, I will go set myself up for the very practical and not classy at all item. Okay. <laughs> Damn, you're well, up again. I gotta say that the um, that wire stripper. I didn't learn that that had a, a re-threader element to it for a number of years. I had no idea what those holes were for on a wire okay. stripper. And um, that was like, a, you know, having to cut a lot of bolts for say, um, uh, when you're putting on a door, a knob on a drawer on a cabinet, you know, a lot of times you have to buy bolts that are slightly deeper than the bolts that they, or the nut or uh, screws that they come with. I'm kind of worried about what Gary's doing. Um, <laughs> I am, oh, but, uh, <laughs> a surprise. Just but uh, being able to thread on there was uh, finding, being able to, after you've cut those bolts to fit and then being able to re-thread the ends or clean them up a bit so that they will go onto the knob was a, a nice feature to, to learn. Um, what I've got, my next tool, and I, um, is a uh, voltage sensor. And so in doing a lot of construction, I end up uh, having to remodel or working around the electrical. And this works simply, you turn it, you know, uh, hit a button and it will, is able to detect a current in a, either a wall or near an outlet if you're checking an outlet to know if it's if it's hot or not, um, you can use this and it makes that beeping noise. I don't know if you can see the light very well or not. Um, there's a little sensitivity knob to to uh, adjust on it, so it's not it can pick up just the circuit that you're working on. But um, if I'm cutting into a wall 
um, if I'm trying to abandon an outlet or a, a light switch, or if I think I'm trying to find a breaker to, to make sure that a, a circuit is off, I'll double check with this to make sure I don't get shocked or electrocute myself. I, I wish I had had this sooner in my life <laughs> um, after being bit a few times by uh, a, a circuit, so. That sounds like a tool that you would recommend that people have in their toolbox. It's, it, yeah, if you're doing any electrical work, it's good to know if it's hot or not. And especially in older houses where you find old knob and tube wiring or wiring that looks a little suspect, um, or you come across a splice that's been made and kind of buried in a wall or in an attic, um, you can check and see if it's hot or not, or if there's a current there um and then uh, address it so you don't have a fire hazard well and wouldn't it be good to to check even if you're just going to let's say cut a hole in your drywall you want to make sure you're not going to cut a wire that would pick that yep. up too. exactly yeah yeah well, oh i wish i yeah i've carried that i've carried those in my pocket now when i'm doing any kind of reconstruction <laughs> um because there's been a few times that i've taken a pair of wire cutters and turned them into wire strippers by just right. blowing through a circuit and it's chewed a hole in them because it was supposed to be off, but it wasn't. So yes, that's, I, that's, I guess, that's hard on your, <laughs> go ahead. Or uh, I was gonna say that. And when you cut a wire like that and they arc, that light is blinding for a while. You're seeing spots. So oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess this should we be where we throw in. If you're going to do anything, electrical go turn it off before you start and still check it don't ever absolutely it's really off <laughs> well as sam said a lot of times in, in if you're coming in to do work on the side you don't know what you're running into there might be a circuit that really isn't even able to turn off it's you know you run into some crazy things when you're doing when you're dealing with other people's work and especially older homes where yeah, you know, exactly been buried over the years. <laughs> Having lived in several older homes, it's <laughs> you check and then you check and then you check again. It's not measure twice, cut once. It's check four or five times before you touch something that might hurt you. <laughs> but Harry, what do you have next? Well, I'm staying with the historic vintage tool theme. And this is something, again, I picked up, actually, this, my dad picked this up from my grandfather. And this is called a geared plier wrench. And I actually ended up looking this up on uh, eBay today. Uh, it's been around for a while. This has a set, you can pull it out and you can adjust the jaws. And it's a nice square rather than like a pair of pliers, which kind of grab in a circular form, this is parallel. So you can actually use it as a wrench. And I found that, I mean, this is the only one I have, but it actually there are, they when they made these things back in Chicago, and this comes in the early 30s, they made it so that they had several jaws that you could actually change the length considerably. Um, I still use this thing. I mean, I use it quite a bit because it's handy. And a lot of times I don't have to turn a, a nut or bolt. As I said, I'm broadcasting from my brewery, which serves as my workroom. And when the weather's so bad, there's a lot of uh, nuts that I have to tighten up on various parts. This one hangs around and even has a handy little screwdriver on the end. You guys are just amazing me with all the things you have found to share. And Gary, you're going to do a live demonstration, right? <laughs> with this one? No. <laughs> I think you could pull two. Oh, with the beer. Okay, I can do that. There you go. There you go. Harry, well, I think you should leave that out for when your grandchildren get moved. <laughs> yes. I bet you it would grab the loose booth really well. <laughs> okay, so this so. is the... Uh, this is my my favorite way to to clean a sink drain. 
and uh, just really, really simple, practical, and a homeowner would like to do this. First, you take your shop back, take your shop back, take the dry filter out of it. Make sure it's a shop vac that can go both ways, wet or dry. Set it up for wet. That's what we're that's what we're going to be doing, and we're going to try to clean the sink with it. And it's really pretty simple. We just go to the clogged sink and open it. The bigger the hose, the better. Go over the drain and clog up. Sometimes a dish rag or whatever, or a wash rag or whatever. Plug up the overflow lines with your fingers here. Turn on the power and suck the suck the whatever is plugging this in. Now this <laughs> only this will only get us this will only clear us as far as the vent line. We know that the vent's gonna relieve to us here. And then we're on hot water. We're on a lot of hot water. Do it again. Pull more out. Pull the hair off. Run this repeatedly. Run the hottest water you can for several minutes. And um, if need be, get underneath and take the plunger out. You'll get even better performance if you do that. But a lot of times this is enough to really do the job. And we're not having to use the nasty chemicals. We're not tearing the trap apart, and it works. So I, I will move. On, I will move on out. Oh, that's wonderful! And most people have a shop vac, and most people get a clogged drain now and then. Here's your answer, direct from Gary, the plumber. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sam, I saw you giggling. You're going to try that next time you have a clogged drain? Yeah, I probably will because, you know, I've I've made a mess of things that some of the stuff you pull out of a uh, a clogged P-trap or whatever there can be um, not one, not smell very nice, but two, get that get on you uh, at the same time. So or this way it would go right down that hose and maybe be a little uh -huh. less to clean up. <laughs> Right. Well, and you're and you're standing right next, <coughs> standing right next to a toilet to dump the shop vac into. Oh, good point. Yeah. So it's um. As long as your clog drains in the bathroom, mine's usually in the kitchen. But. <laughs> oh well. Okay. Okay. Variation there, but but it does work. Yes. But it's still not that far to a place to dump it, so it's okay. <laughs> I uh, it's I found it's a, a really practical way and uh another another reason to buy a shop back. <laughs> Sam, I expect a report if you try it. I want to know if it works for you. <laughs> Will do. You'll be the first one I I text. All right. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> All right. By very strange things sometimes. So. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have next, Sam? Do you have one or two tools? Oh, I got a bunch of tools laying here. Um, pick one. <laughs> I, I'm going to just pick this one. Uh, this is a block plane and uh, a low angle block plane um, that uh, I typically use in finish work or shaping a piece of wood to fit uh, molding um, or an irregular surface. Um, and this one, I uh, the low angle block plane is also good for um, uh, planing pieces of uh, uh, end grain wood. So that's why I like this. Um, and then I found a new trick um, or a new little hack for these. Uh, you know, the blade sticks out the bottom of the shoe, um, and uh, that's what you you want to keep sharp. Um, but what can happen in your toolbox is the uh, things can ding that or knock it up. So I found um, that having 
these thin magnets uh, that that some businesses hand out like uh, little, um, oh, what are they? Uh, refrigerator, uh, refrigerator, refrigerator magnet. magnet, but it's, you know, like their card, a magnetized card. It fits nicely on the bottom of your block plane and then will protect the blade at the same time. So and you're kind of a, in the toolbox, <laughs> right? You know, hopefully we've adjusted it back, but that'll keep things from dinging it and, and, um, because you spend you know you spend some time keeping that sh sharp and you want it to stay that way so great yeah cause all right anything sharp in your toolbox everybody exactly band-aids band -aids for your toolbox <laughs> very important tool, a band-aid <laughs> harry how many more tools do you have i'm just looking at oh i got a, i got a ton of them i can do a couple but you want you tell me how long any more you want me to do i'll, I'll do two or i'll do one do one. Do one? Yep. Yeah, okay. Hopefully we can get around one more time. It's, All got, right. Well, we'll see. Uh, Sam, I just want to say that that's a great idea because I always just back the blade back and it's just a pain in the neck to keep moving it back and forth. I like that magnet idea. So I'll keep that yeah. one in mind. All right. I'm going to show you what I consider my favorite two tools to have in my toolbox or at least with me. And that's a checkbook and a credit card. <laughs> Because it's just too often we try to do things that we are that's over our ability or at my age, what I don't want to do anymore. And it's just better off to call somebody. And when you do that, call and make sure it's somebody you can depend on, somebody who's reliable and have no problem writing the check or dropping this credit card off to them. Tree that trimming. Wonderful. <laughs> Taking down trees. I I will pay. <laughs> I, I did a whole lot this year because we had a hundred and ten year old oak that the carpenter ants decided they loved a whole lot. Oh, wow. <laughs> mm. Well, Gary, it's going to be hard to top your shop vac tool, but. Are, are you going to show us that roll of lovely stuff you showed at the very beginning? <laughs> Actually, valuable tool. this little tiny pair of vice grips. Um, and I've got, I've got bigger ones, but genuine vice grips. And, uh, you know, they've got a little wire cutter in there. That's well and good. But there are so many times that, you know, the... The head is stripped off of a of a screw or a bolt, and you get in there with your vice grips. And again, as you as you clamp on there, you adjust in, leave up, crank in a little more, try it again, a little more, try it again. Sink that, sink that those teeth into the metal as tight as you can, and then go to work with it. Um, again, a, a tool you have to, to know how to make the best use of. Otherwise, you'll give it a bad name. <laughs> so, oh, oh. Well, Harry reminded me of one of my favorite tools, so I'm going to interrupt and take a turn. Okay. It's my phone. I hate having to go to the big box store or the little box store more than once especially if it's a part that I can't get a part to take with me. Oh, look, you get to see my entire phone. Um, take a picture. If you're taking something apart before you go to Lowe's or Home Depot or Menards, take a picture so that you remember what it's supposed to look like when you put it back together. So you have a picture of your part. Um, People take a lot of scenery. I take a lot of parts and pieces pictures or how can I fix it picture or what can I make the picture um, with my phone. It is it is my reference as much as it is my memory collector. <laughs> oh, if you've got a phone that you can take a picture and take a picture of whatever you need from the store, it could save you trip number two and three and five and ten and you know, and you can't go and buy just one thing either. So it'll save you lots of money. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, can you tap my phone? 
All I have is a notepad, Gene. So. <laughs> well, yeah, but you know what you want, and I don't. <laughs> <laughs> What do you got uh, there, Gary? A well-worn little pocket meter. So as much as I like the sniffer, there's also times that the the, the meter that we can get ohms and volts and, and you know, everything we want there and check batteries. You know, this, this carries over to automotive stuff. Uh, you name it. You name it. So that's a favorite. And... Oh, I've got a, another recent favorite here. Uh, metric bolt pin plate. This is quite handy if you if you get into uh, any automotive stuff today. You know, figure out what on earth. Uh, we old timers were not that familiar with the the metric. Uh, thread system. So this this really helps matters. Great. Go ahead, Sam. What do you have? All right. I'm on to my power tools now. Um, a Sawzall has, for remodeling, comes mm -hmm. in real handy. Um, this is a cordless one, which has, I was hesitant buying at first because I didn't think it would have the same amount of power as a uh, corded tool. Um, but I've never, uh, this is never disappointed. Um, it's, it's versatile. It's not very pretty in its cuts. So it's not a finishing tool, um, but it gets the job done. This one has what's called a rafter hook on it. So if you're working someplace, you can hang it off a two by four or, or some sort of two by or hook it onto something. Um, Especially if you're elevated or up on a ladder or something, this comes in real handy. So, okay, Harry, what have you? What's your favorite that we have left? Show us. Well, this one I'll just uh, kind of end up with this one. Uh, I keep this in my toolbox. This is a four-way fo file, and I'm gonna see if I can bring. Okay, there it is. You can see it's got a rasp edge, very rough on one side. A smoother file on the other and the reason it's four-way is because you can turn around and I can I do it this way you can see that one side's a little rounded so it's got a rounded rasp and a rounded file not one of the best ones to have because a full rasp or a full file is much better but this one fits in a toolbox in a tool belt and it's there when you need it how about Gary? Show show us that lovely silver roll. Come on. Uh, uh, well, I gotta I gotta show you a pocket knife first. Oh, okay. I've I've carried a pocket knife since uh, uh, 1963, but yes, I use the duct tape from time to time too. <laughs> Sam, do you carry a pocket knife? I do carry a pocket knife. Yep. Gary, do you carry a pocket knife? Yes, I do. How come girls don't carry pocket knives? Don't they? Does. Or <laughs> not, she has the past. <laughs> Did, do you carry? Do you have a pocket knife, Jean? No. Maybe you could get that as an accessory for your phone. Yes, <laughs> I bet it would fit in this little pocket. <laughs> there you go. I got, I got vice grips for Christmas. Oh, nice. Okay. Okay. In fact, yeah. even when we travel, we we always have one of those little uh, small, about so big, um, utility Swiss Army type of knives, and it's got scissors, it's got a tweezers, and I mean, obviously, it's a little more difficult because you got to put it in your check-in luggage. But once you get there, you can take it out, and you're out and about in some strange place, and there's always a time when scissors or tweezers come in handy. Well, and, the and there's a corkscrew on there too, and that can come in handy too. <laughs> I carry scissors, I carry tweezers, I carry a sewing kit. So I guess I have the girl version of your tool, of your toolbox. Uh, 
but I can sew your button or fix the seam in your pants. So, <laughs> well, I think we're close enough to wrapping up. I would like to thank all of you. I've had so much fun tonight. I hope people watching this has had as much fun and have learned. I, I mean, I've seen things tonight that I had no idea existed or like the little rafter hook. I had no idea it had a name. I would have said the thing you hang it up with. So I am just so thrilled that you guys shared so much with us and hopefully we'll do this again. So think of some more fun, unique things that you can share and maybe we'll come back and visit this topic again in a couple of months. Um, is anyone watching? Do you have any questions? Um, if so, you can still send them to me at education. Oh, what was Sam's battery operator cutter called? The, the Sawzall? I mean, I think it's, a, it's technically called a reciprocating saw. So Sawzall is just a trade name like uh, Jello is for gelatin. So, but yeah, reciprocating uh, saw. Great. Thanks for the question, Dorothy. Glad you're watching tonight. Um, if you need to borrow one of those, let us know. I think we have one if you would like to try it. So let us know. Give me a call. Give me a text. Give me, uh, send me an email, whatever. And if any of the rest of you have questions after viewing this at a later date, again, you can send your questions to education at communityhomeworks.org. Um, we are still doing critical home repairs, can always use your financial support. And please share with any of your friends or neighbors um, that might need some critical home repairs. We have available funds and available time and would certainly like to help people in need. Again, Sam, Harry, Gary, it was great to see you. Hopefully we'll be back together in person again soon. And thank you, thank you, thank you again. I had a great time. And Sam, smile. You had a good time too. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And and eventually I'll hand out Harry's phone number and we'll all go to his house for beer. <laughs> all right.